Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. Today is a special one because we are doing two of our world famous tests, a 70 mile per hour highway range test, as well as a DC fast charging curve test with this, the beautiful Polestar 1. So let's see how this does. It is a plug-in hybrid, but it has 50 kilowatt DC fast charging and it has a 33 kilowatt hour battery pack. So it should do EPA rated around hundred miles on a charge. We'll see what we get in our 70 mile per hour test. Let's jump in the car and go. It's fully charged. I had it plugged in here overnight. What are your guesses? How far do you think it'll go? I think it's gonna do more than 70 miles, but we'll see. We are inside the Polestar 1. If you take a look here, the car is predicting 73 miles on one charge. It also is predicting 60 miles on gasoline. We have a pretty low tank. So let's get this thing started and we are going to select pure mode, electric rear wheel drive. Now it's predicting 78 miles. We're just gonna get in and go. We're gonna run air conditioning eco, again, at a reasonable temperature like we normally do in a loop style test. The highway is less than a mile this way. Let's jump in and go. We are now merging onto the highway pretty gently. We don't wanna burn off excess energy as heat loss. We just wanna get all that usable capacity out of that battery pack. So we will merge on gently. By the way, this is one of the few plug-in hybrids that you can drive in full electric mode, floor the accelerator pedal, and the internal combustion engine does not kick on. So what we're gonna do is get up to 70 miles per hour. I'm gonna set the pilot assist here in the Polestar 1. And what that will do is it will uh, do active lane centering, active steering, and we're gonna set it right at 70. Now I'm gonna check our GPS device and make sure that 70 is truly 70 miles per hour. Great news, the 70 mile per hour indicated speed is accurate for GPS. Now I think I'm just gonna put on the music, enjoy this Bowers and Wilkins sound system, and also just enjoy this beautiful cabin. Also look at this pole star shining up on the roof, love that. And this lighting strip that goes all the way around the car. It is a gorgeous place in here, absolutely gorgeous. And it drives so nice as well. But this isn't a driving review. It's all about the range on the electric portion. As we're rolling up into this beautiful sunrise, the heads up display is not actually flashing. It's just the way the camera's picking it up. Let's talk a little bit about the conditions of this test. Right now it's not really that warm. It's 62 degrees, it's fine, but I usually like it a little bit warmer for these range tests. Um, other than that, tire pressures have been set to manufacturer ratings, as we always do, and we are doing a loop style test, which means we're gonna try to end as close back to my home where I started uh, with 0% battery. Now, the thing with this car being a hybrid is it will just turn off the, uh, the electric portion and kick on the internal combustion engine and let us uh, drive on gas. So we don't need to make sure we're back completely at zero, but we want the majority of this test to be a loop style test. We also uh, have a couple other things that are pretty interesting. When you drive these Polestar or any Geely product that I've driven so far, when you change it from hybrid and put it in pure, pure electric mode, it allows a deeper discharge of the battery pack. And I'm pretty sure that's because they expect people in hybrid just to maybe not charge it so they don't wanna hurt the batteries leaving it dead. But when you go into pure, you get an extra, let's say a kilowatt hour or two to drain, which is nice. So we're definitely in pure mode and it'll be plugged in as soon as we're done with this test. We are now pulling off the highway with, I don't know, 51, 52% state of charge. It's pretty difficult to gauge the state of charge. We're regening a little bit. I'm gonna to try to avoid too much regen, of course, but we don't wanna use friction brakes. And that's just for efficiency. Anytime you have to regen or put power out, there's a loss of efficiency. And we try to maximize that for this car. Um, one thing I really think people don't understand about the Polestar 1, and I honestly didn't know much about it before I started driving it, uh, the hybrid system is 
so good that you can drive this car as a battery electric vehicle. The problem with many plug-in hybrids is they're either speed limited, so you can only drive electric up to X miles per hour. This will do 100 miles per hour in electric, allegedly. And it also has plenty of acceleration. I'm not gonna demonstrate that now because I'm gonna minimize heat loss and I don't wanna just floor it during our range test. But you can absolutely drive this car 100% electric and it's still pretty fast. I mean, it's faster than our i3, it's faster than a lot of things. Then when you drive this car in hybrid mode and you use that four cylinder plus that electric drivetrain, it's actually really quick. We drag raced it against a GT500 and BMW M8 competition. And while it didn't win, it was so, so close. I mean, within two feet of the GT500 in the quarter mile, which is just like mind bogglingly impressive. This is a muscle car with a modern take. It's very cool. We are just about to pass the exit right here where we merged onto the highway. And my plan is we have three miles indicated until empty. I think we're just gonna run it on the highway at true 70. Um, pretty impressive range so far. We'll wait to see the final number before what I reveal what it is. I gotta say, driving this car is so unbelievably comfortable. We have people taking pictures of it. It's so cool. I just don't know how to describe it. I, and I really don't know how to describe Polestar without using the word Volvo, because it's not technically a Volvo at all, but it's a Volvo in here, which is just so weird. Uh, it, you know, what's interesting is we, we've driven Volvos on this channel. We've driven Volvos. I've driven almost every model in the Volvo lineup. This feels almost no different. On track, though, it is much better. It's much more dynamic on the racetrack. Uh, two miles indicated until empty. What will it be? What will the final number be? I don't know. We are at one mile until empty. We're still in electric mode. So far we've driven 62 or 63 miles. I'll have to check. But I will log the mileage once we tip over and we'll see how, how poor or good the range is. We have just reached dash dash to empty on the screen, which means we're about to run out. It doesn't think we can get a mile. And uh, yeah, the battery's completely depleted on the gauge. What will happen when it turns on the internal combustion engine? I'm not sure. I guess it'll take us out of pure and put us in hybrid. Um, we have driven about 65 miles, but we're still in electric mode and we're still chugging along. <laughs> pretty nice and it also shows no degradation of power it says if I was to floor it there we go just tipped off 1129.5 so it just turned on the internal combustion engine so we have achieved 62.9 miles in our inside EVs 70 mile per hour highway range test I expected 70 miles um, but that's okay. I mean, look, this is a super long range plug-in hybrid that most owners probably won't even drive it in electric mode. They'll just drive it in normal hybrid and let the car figure itself out and use the electric motors for the boost function uh, because it's a seriously fast car. I mean, it's not slow. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Not bad. Okay conditions, I'd say. If it was a little warmer, I'd probably do a little bit better. But roughly between 63 and 67 miles is my guess that most owners will achieve cruising at 70. So nice work to Polestar. Definitely love a plug-in hybrid. This is the perfect amount of range for a plug-in hybrid. And I hope we see more with this much range coming soon. All right, we are going to plug this thing in. I've run the hybrid battery as low as it would let me go, basically until the internal combustion engine kicked on. So we have a CCS connection, which is very rare for a plug-in hybrid. We've just plugged it in. Let's take a look to see. It says it's connecting to vehicle. I've never DC charged a plug-in hybrid before. In the US, I'm pretty sure it's this car and the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV are the only two. In Europe, there's a few more. You can get a pretty cool like 60 kilowatt hour GLE diesel from Mercedes uh, plug-in hybrid with a D uh, CCS connection. So we have put in everything here. Let's see what the charger thinks the battery's at. 4%. That's when the internal combustion engine kicked on. 
and now we are ramping up. Now we're not going to do a full curve. We're not doing a full dedicated video on this, but we are going to take a look at the intricacies of charging. So we're already at 52 kilowatt. Wow, that's past. It says it should only do 50 kilowatt, but the charger is delivering 53 to 54 kilowatt, which means the car is probably taking uh, exactly 50. There's always a little bit of loss when you charge these cars. What we're gonna do is just charge it up, see how much energy we stuff into the battery pack. Yeah, it doesn't even tell us the speed. Um, and we're gonna check in when the car starts to taper. So from 4%, we're at five right now. It's doing 54 kilowatt into this port, which is pretty impressive for a plug-in hybrid. I don't know why it needs a CCS connection, but I'm happy there is one. That's pretty cool. So here we are at 37%. We've just tapered off of the 55, 56 kilowatt and we've fallen off a pretty hard ledge here and now we're riding its charging curve. So what it probably did was had a target amp value, current value going through. Then when it got here, it reached a certain kilowatt number, it dropped the current and now we will ride that as pack voltage increases. So will our total power. So we'll probably ride this up to 45 kilowatt or 50 kilowatt is my guess and then we will see it drop off another ledge. Silly ice cars. Here we are approaching 50%. We're at 46%. We're still targeting that 36 to 38 kilowatt, which is interesting to me because it's not actually increasing that much as pack voltage goes up. You can see here, we've been here 16 minutes to 50%. We've only added 13 kilowatt hours, and that is the downside of 50 kilowatt peak. And now 38, 39 kilowatt really isn't that fast. Um, interestingly, normally this dash here shows 80% on EA stations, but it's, all, it's showing 95. I wonder if that has to do with the car's buffer or what exactly, not sure. And here we are around 54%. We have fallen off another clip and it is tapering hard. So while this car does have a CCS connection, I don't see any practical use for using it on a road trip because you could just fill it up with gas and you'd be good to go cruising. You can also charge the uh, engine, or I should say the electric battery pack with the engine up front. So you can put this in a charge mode. And let me show you what's underneath this trunk. It's pretty cool. One of the Polestar's party tricks is this amazing piece back here. And this is something I think is just the coolest thing ever. They have made electric powertrains look cool to the normal person. You can see all of the connectors lined out and telling you exactly what they do. Certainly you don't have much trunk space with this massive battery pack back here. That's fine. This is not meant to be your practical daily car. Of course it can be. It's all wheel drive. You could put a roof rack on it, I'm sure. But this is just the coolest thing. You pull up to a car show, you can show this off. It's just something special every time you open the trunk. That's the cool thing about this car is it feels special. It's completely made of carbon fiber, at least many components are, and that adds to the cost, of course. It just adds to like, this is such a weird, cool, interesting, unique piece that not enough people will ever know exists. And um, we are so lucky to get to be able to test one. Very lucky. There's so few of these in the world right now. It's before they are on sale. It is an amazing opportunity. Here we are tapering even harder, 19 kilowatt. We're below 20 kilowatt, right around 20 at 23 minutes into the session, we're at 57%. Again, it's hard really to explain why there's a CCS connection on this car, but uh, not complaining, just more ways to charge is pretty cool. They uh, obviously didn't uh, optimize the DC charging curve on this thing, and I think that's totally fine. It's just not needed. Um, what is needed though is just to get a lawn chair, sit outside, and look at this beautiful shape of the Polestar. Wow, I do not think it gets any better than this. It is so premium, but it is so unpretentious. People think, they look at this car for sure, but they don't think you're an idiot for driving one. It is the gentleman's choice of a GT Cruiser. Now this isn't a full Polestar 1 review as I've said, and we'll leave all the fun stuff, but look at this. This is a light that shines through and also shows up as a hologram on the inside right over here on this beautiful glass roof. But that is such a cool touch that when you open the door and you look at this car from the outside, you can see the Polestar logo shining through. 
And here's kind of the cool thing. We're at 73%, still doing 19 kilowatt or so. It's really not bad. It's held this uh, power level all the way from about 60, 65%. So not the end of the world, but it is taking a little while. I imagine it'll be at least another half hour to get it to full charge, but we'll see. I don't know how much of a top buffer this battery has. Just about 45 minutes to get to 80%. Not amazing, but again, I don't really know the point. Also, why is this say 95% right there? Not sure, 12 kilowatt, not the best. Of course, we're going all the way to 100. We gotta see what it does. And here at 94%, we've officially dipped under 10 kilowatt. Wow, this thing's taking a little while. Let's keep it going. We gotta go to 100. And here we are charged up to 98% pulling six kilowatts. So right now we have reached level two speeds and that's pretty impressive at 98%. There must be a little bit of a buffer up there at the battery pack um, because I'm sure there is. It's a plug-in hybrid. They usually have big buffers. Anyway, 99% uh, now, 76 minutes to get here. Certainly takes a while. Uh, again, I cannot find a great practical reason to use a DC charger on the Polestar 1. I guess it's more or less if you're there and there happens to be a plug, why not? I'm certainly not upset with the fact there's a DC charger on the Polestar 1. I just don't think many owners will utilize the function, but I guess one of those things, it's better to have it than not to have it. So we're gonna unplug here at 99, 100%, and we will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.